Danny Jacobs' manager says that a move up to 168 is likely for Jacobs, and he could come back down to middleweight to fight Jamal Charlo or Triple G rematch next year. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang please hit the bell icon shout out to the super chats channel donations the venmo donations and the patreon family we working now mike coppinger has been busy he's been dropping the hotness link in the description shout out to him he has spoke with danny jacobs one of his um reps his manager i believe kevin or his name is keith Connolly, and it says keith Connolly tells the athletic Danny Jacobs' return date and opponent will be announced in the coming weeks. Likely a move up to 168, 168 pounds, 168 would be the super middleweight division. Quote, Danny Jacobs would be open to returning to middleweight in 2020 for big New York fights like Jamal Charlo or Gennady Golovkin rematch, he said. So he's not ruling out that he could come back and come back down but he's only going to do it for obviously the big names like a triple g rematch which he fought i was at that fight i covered that fight for you guys in new york it was a real bad snowstorm that particular week or a guy like jamal charlo who's now a full-bodied wbo champion or excuse me wbc excuse me i want to give my thoughts real quick jacob see he already mentioned this move that he had a slow start in the Canelo fight, but then he he came on in the second half. Canelo faded, made the fight closer, and you know maybe Jacob Jacobs is big. You know he has a lot he has a, a lot of height. You know he has the frame to definitely move up to 168, and he's been fighting probably around that weight for quite some time. I don't know exactly how much he was in the amateurs, but you know maybe it's just his body telling him. Yo, you gotta, you gotta move up. Especially since he fought when he fought Gennady Golovkin and he fought Canelo, he opted not to do the same day weigh-ins. One was part of the IBF rules in the Golovkin fight, and then the other was the Canelo rules. Canelo put it in the contract that there was the same day weigh-in because he didn't want Jacobs to. He worried Jacobs would get too big, you know. And Jacobs kind of went around that and did his own thing and wanted to come in comfortable, right? So he opted to not fight for the IBF belt in the first fight with Golovkin. And then I don't know if he paid the fine, but they said he was supposed to get fined heavily for the Canelo situation. So they end up fighting. Canelo beat him. It is what it is. But, you know, doing stuff like that, like allowing your body to come in comfortably, maybe that was a, a, a sign, you know, a little omen from your body that, you know, we've been at this weight class for a while Triple G, he's already expressed that he don't want no work with Charlo, Andrade, and he's not looking in the past, so to speak, for Danny Jacobs. So as great of a fight as that would be to see where they're at right now, I don't think I don't think Triple G is down to fight, you know, the threats. It looks like Triple G's on almost like a retirement, you know, farewell tour or something. And it's a shame. I think the zone should really hold Gennady Golovkin, all the money they're reportedly paying him for like the likes of Steve Rolls and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's a shame because the boxing fans demand more. Triple G's almost 40, he's 37 years old, and he really doesn't have this extensive body of work. You know, for whatever reason, the best names on his r resume only came recently. And on top of that, on top of that, it's the best names on his resume. Both fights were all of three of them two canelo fights and the jacobs fight they're all controversial endings you know some people thought jacobs won i thought jacobs won canelo had a draw controversial and then the rematch i don't really see the controversy but some people said it was controversial in the second canelo fight so he doesn't even have a stern win like you know matthew macklin win or his rubio win or daniel gill win a win like that you know he doesn't have any type of win like that against the better names he's fought, i.e. Danny Jacobs or 
Canelo Alvarez in two fights. So I don't think Triple G wants that. But beyond that, you know, no one's holding him to it. And DAZN's pay scale seems like they're offering him the, uh, a partnership in the company and offering him good money to fight the likes of Steve Rose. So I, I don't, I wouldn't hold my breath, especially if he's moving up to 168. He was at Caleb Smith's fight and he said he likes the way he fights. That's, you know, that's a possible fight that they could make at 168. Both guys are with Eddie Hearn and Matram. So I we'll have to see how it plays out. The other name that they said I do like against Jamal Charlo, that's a good fight. Real good fight. Jamal Charlo, he's big for the weight class. Um, but Jacob said he would come back down to 160 to entertain a big fight like this. Or at least his representation said that. I haven't heard Jacobs himself say that. But, you know, he has to see how it goes because... In my opinion, he doesn't want to have too many fights at 168 and then go backwards because that wouldn't be good. You know, you you don't want to, you know, get around the 30 year old mark or older and start playing with your weight and then, you know, gaining weight and then having to lose a bunch of weight. It doesn't work like that. So if he just wants to fight at the end of the year like october november or something and fight at that 168 and then do like like a once and done and then try to line up a charlo fight or a triple g and if he can get it then come back down that's not bad you know canelo did that kind of with rocky fielding moved up to super middleweight and then moved back down to 60 for for jacob so there's a little bit of flexibility but what i'm saying is jacobs in my opinion he's not going to want to have several fights four fights at the weight class of 168 and super middleweight and then try to come crashing back down. So it would have to be at the, the front part of next year. Charlo fight would be, you know, it'd be excellent. And it seems like this is what it's come to the black murderers row, as I predicted, because Canelo doesn't seem to want to fight Andrade. He definitely didn't seem like he wanted to fight Charlo. And, you know, neither does Triple G. So black murderers row 2.0. Looks like Andre is going to have to fight Charlo or the demand is going to be there for it at least. Or Jacobs might have to come back in the division and, and fight one of them, you know, because it doesn't seem like the popular two Canelo and Triple G want those type of problems with the equivalent elite black fighters at middleweight. It's just what I see. Let me know what you guys think. Jacobs at 168. You know, there's a lot of talent up there. David Benavidez, you have Caleb Plant, you know, Jose Uzcadegui. Let me know how you think he matches up at super middleweight. Obviously, you have um, Caleb Smith, as I mentioned earlier in this video. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.